Okay. Cornell West. A couple of weeks ago, I covered a story that the Daily Beast reported about Cornell West. I was like, here comes the first smear, guys. There's going to be many more as we get into 2024, right? They put out a story saying that Cornell West owed, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in back taxes and that he hasn't paid child support, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the things I pointed out in that article was that there were no receipts. And whenever you're talking about finances, I want you to show me some receipts. Now, since that article was released, Cornell West has actually appeared on The Breakfast Club and he did, you know, respond to that. And he said that they're not telling the truth. They're not being honest. Cornell West will be here Tuesday afternoon. So that'll be a second time back on since his campaign was announced. So I can talk to him more about this. But now ABC News has basically taken that article from the Daily Beast and they've gone one step further. They're basically trying to really make Dr. West look like he's a bad person. Now I want to start off by saying this. For the people at ABC who wrote this article, Abby Cruz and Laura Grassoni, um, coming after people about tax information, this is not the own that you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what kills me. It's like, do you not realize people don't like the IRS? <laughs> so you come after for that. I'm just like, let's, let's go into the article. Green party candidate Cornell West owes more than half a million dollars in taxes and child support records. One expert said voters have a right to know why this isn't disclosed. Do we? How many politicians and presidents owe taxes or didn't pay taxes? Donald Trump had issues with his taxes. Like a lot of us just really don't like the IRS, man. So that's why like this story, I was just kind of like, eh, this is not the own you think it is. Especially for those of us in the black community, like, to me, you just kind of come across like a snitch. <laughs> Let me go on. Um, Okie dokie. Philosopher and presidential Green Party candidate Cornell West currently owes more than half a million dollars between unpaid taxes and unpaid child support, according to tax records. Records show Wes owes nearly $466,000 in federal income taxes from 2013 until 2017. Okay. Define O. Because when it comes to taxes, you can owe taxes, but you can also be a part of a payment plan. Okay. Like, and those of you, you file your own taxes, you know, these things like, I've had to do this multiple times where like we file the taxes and I'm like, oh, this is what I owe. Yeah, definitely can't pay that right now. So you have an uh, option to do that installment payment plan. There's like three different options, I think. But you have an option to sign up as a payment plan. And then basically you make a monthly payment until you pay off the balance. So technically you can say that he owes $466,000 but that doesn't mean he's not paying his balance. That's why I asked for receipts. I don't see any receipts. You know, they make it sound like Cornell West just didn't pay any taxes. Don't you think that if he didn't pay taxes all these years, don't you think the IRS would have came after Cornell West already seized some of his property and his possessions? This is how foolish these people are. Like a lot of American people, let's think about this. A lot of people are going to read this article and not do their due diligence, especially if they've never filed their own taxes. They're not really going to think about that. Don't you think if, if that was the case and he wasn't a part of any type of payment plan or trying to pay this balance down, don't you think the IRS would have came to Cornell West and seized his possessions by now? Since 2013, it's 2023. Let's continue. Boy, I tell you. 
This came after he occurred and later repaid a debt of nearly 725000 from 1998 to 2005 and more than 34000 in 2008, according to tax records in Mercer County, New Jersey, where he owns a home. Oh, God forbid he own a home. <laughs> God forbid he owes taxes and he owns a home. So what? <laughs> My God. This one here. Additionally, Wes has an outstanding 49,500 child support judgment from 2003 record show. Again, how do you know he doesn't have a payment plan to be part of that? And let me tell you something about child support, okay? Let me tell you something. I sincerely hope they don't try to use this line towards black people and people who are living below the poverty line about you should not support him because he owes child support because they gonna look at you and laugh in your face. A lot of people owe child support. The point is, even if it's owed, how do you know there's not some type of payment in place? Think about this, guys. If he owes this from 2003, it is 2023. You don't think they would have came after Cornel Cornel West already? As public of a figure as he is? Come on. They used to do these gigs, right? Like so they used to do this thing where they would try to get guys who owe child support, right? So they would actually send them some type of letter or invite and say that you won tickets to like a game. So like Massachusetts, they would say, you just want all these tickets to the Red Sox game, free tickets, free this, yada, yada, or Celtics, et cetera. They get all these guys in a room to go pick up the free tickets and they bust them for unpaid child support. True story. Now, as public as Cornell West is, he's not someone who's difficult to find. Those guys I just told you about show up for the free tickets. Those guys were hiding. They weren't that easy to find. But Cornell West is a public figure. He's been on national media. He's been on independent media. He's a professor. He's not difficult to find. So don't you think they would have came after him? Let me continue. Boy, I tell you. The debts were first reported by the Daily Beast. And guys, that was weeks ago. I covered that story from the Daily Beast weeks ago. So that's how late these two journalists are with writing this article. Where the hell were they weeks ago? Let me continue. The tax debts have not been paid off as of 30 days ago. The last available data, according to Mercer County Records, ABC News reached out to Wes and his campaign to see if Wes had plans to pay off the debt or set up a payment plan. They have not returned those requests for comment because that's really none of your damn business. Why do you need to know what I have set up to pay off my taxes or to pay off child support or anything like that? Why do you need to know that? These are the kind of things that just, they ain't looking into anybody else's tax records. Think about it, guys. They looking into RFK's tax records. They looking into Marianne's tax records. They looking into Biden's tax records. His business dealings in Ukraine. They looking into that. I'm going to show you why they're doing this. The outstanding child support payment is owed to Atul Gertas, his former partner and mother of his children. ABC News was unable to reach Gertas for a comment. So here's my problem right here. Um, what I don't like about this is now you're getting kids involved. And to me, I feel like kids should be off limits. That's just me. I don't care you're running for an office, you're a celebrity, whatever. I feel like children should be off limits. Let me continue. While it's not clear how long West didn't pay child support, New Jersey family lawyer Kathleen Stockton said that the amount of money appears substantial. <laughs> 
So you're going to get on him for not paying child support, but you don't know how long he hasn't paid child support. Okay. The average U S child support obligation is about 5,800 per year, according to census data, making West nearly 50,000 more than eight times that Stockton noted that it is possible West paid Gertas and didn't register it with the court, though Wes has given no indication of that. If that's possible, why did you write this article? If that's possible, why didn't you, don't you think you should have tried to find information about that? If you're going to write this, this article, this is ABC news guys. This is not, we talked about the daily beast, but this is ABC news. When the question of his debts was brought up on the Breakfast Club radio morning show last week, Wes told the radio show host Charlemagne the God that they were being used as a distraction from his presidential campaign, which has focused on ending poverty, mass incarceration, and environmental degradation. Anytime you shine a flashlight under somebody's clothes, you're going to find all kind of mess because that what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. Earlier on the show, Wes mentioned he was broke as the 10 commandments financially, personally, collectively. Wes debts are personal, not related to the campaign. So they may not directly bear on the finances of his candidacy. But you still feel a need to bring it up. Still, personal finance issues have been known to interfere with campaigns. And they bring up the example of Florida Senator Marco Rubio, sometimes imprudent management of his own finances, were scrutinized during his 2016 campaign for president. And then Wisconsin's Governor Scott Walker's personal debt seemed to undermine his message of physical hawkishness. They're comparing him to Marco Rubio and Scott Walker. This article is such a reach. What would they have said about Maxwell Frost if he was running for president? Remember Maxwell Frost was the Gen Z candidate from Florida who ran as a progressive, turned his back on the Palestinian people so that he wouldn't get challenged by APAC. He won, got to DC, couldn't get an apartment because the landlords told him his credit wasn't good enough. And also they didn't start getting paid till that January. So he didn't have enough money to put down the, the three months up front, and the credit was an issue. So let me ask you a question. What if Maxwell Frost would have run for president? Would they go into his finances too? Let me continue. According to West's financial disclosure filed with the FEC in August 2023, he currently makes at least $200,000 annually. That includes his professorship at the Union Theological Seminary, where his annual income falls upward of $100,000. His speaking engagements where he makes at least another 100,000 and his retirement fund, which earns him somewhere between 5,000 and 15,000 annually. His spouse, a professor makes at least $50,000 per year. So let me highlight something here, which I think is interesting. When they mention his retirement fund, first of all, Somewhere between 5,000 and 15,000, that's a pretty significant gap. You couldn't narrow that down. You just guessing. And two, this go to show you how terrible this country is about taking care of people after they've done their, their work for this country. The retirement funds that some people receive in this country ain't shit. I'm just telling like it is. The retirement funds that some people receive in this country ain't shit. 
And that's why some people after they retire still have to work. $5,000 to $15,000 annually. You can't live off that. Let me continue. Uh, Kedrick Payne, an ethics lawyer with the Campaign Legal Center, said in an email to ABC News that the U.S. Office of Government Ethics advises candidates to disclose debts the size of Wes. The federal disclosure law requires candidates for president to report liabilities owed over $10,000. Well, hell, if you went to college, because I'm thinking about financial uh, student loans, you know, child support is excluded. I'm going to say this again. Child support is excluded. So why are they reporting it? Something to think about. But OGE advises that overdue taxes are reportable. If West in fact owes taxes, voters have a right to know why this isn't disclosed. Payne wrote. I'm just thinking about all the other politicians that had tax issues and they were just like, whatever. Okay, it goes on to say West associate author Christopher Phillips described West as authentic and someone who hasn't hesitated to spend his own money to help others. Phillips, who said he has known West for eight years, said that when he first met West, West over the phone, the scholar volunteered to lecture and spend time with his students at the University of Pennsylvania, where Phillips was a writing uh, fellow. He said he could come down on his own nickel and he spent the entire day breaking philosophical bread with my students just because he likes what I do. I told you they were going to come out with more of the smears to try to come out against Cornell West. How's the chat? Did the chat freeze, Eric? I think the chat froze. The chat is glitchy. Yeah. It's interesting. Anyway, I don't know. YouTube is glitchy. Anywho, we need to talk about why they're coming after Dr. West the way that they are. And we predicted this was going to happen. Because Dr. West is actually a big threat. More of a threat than people may realize. And I'm going to show you in just a second something that mainstream media is not showing you. But first and foremost, I think we need to remember what Dr. West's campaign is about. Now, here is Kit Cabello from Hardlands Media, and here's Chuck Modi. I want you to listen to what Chuck says about Cornell West campaign. We have to look at Dr. West in a three-level um, perspective. Not just what, can he win it. It's a long shot, but I don't think Biden's going to win either, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, there are two other pieces. One, can he help build a movement? Can he um, first get 5%, okay? Does he get 5% so the Green Party could get funding, federal funding in the future that could be part of growing a movement? That's number one. Can he get 15% to get on that debate stage mm -hmm. and turn debates into Cornell's classroom? Do something that we've never seen. Speak truth to power in corporate spaces. I want him to say to both Trump and Biden, like he did to RFK Jr., Get off the crack pipe if you think Palestinians and Israelis, there it's a two-sided argument. And break mm -hmm. that down in front of everyone. I want to see him talk about health care. I want to see him talk about cop city and the cop cities. I don't want it to be just you and I on hard lens media or Dr. West and you on hard lens media. I want the entire nation to be educated. And in its most tangible form, if he were to bring that to light and call people out in such a way that they are, their hypocrisy is in front of everyone, and it could help stop Cop City, it could help support the activists who've been fighting for two or three years, well, I believe that is stopping fascism as much as anyone. Because if you stop Cop City and you could halt that militarized project, that is as big a tangible outcome because those police are going to be beating on people, whether a Republican's president, whether a Democrat's president, whether an independent's president. So it doesn't matter. So we have to look at Dr. West as a mobilizing figure, as a mobilizing figure. And should he lose? And he probably will. 
We have to take the baton afterwards. Organizers have to take the baton afterwards and say thank you, Dr. West, to giving voice to these very important issues that we're going to keep fighting for. And that is the point of Dr. West's campaign. What Chuck just told you there. If he gets that 5%, you get the federal funding. If he gets that 15%, then we're talking about him being on the debate stage. And could you imagine the American people hearing what Cornell West has to say on the debate stage? And then you take it from there. Win or lose, you take it from there. And we continue a movement that Bernie did not continue. But I'm going to tell you why they're scared. Let me show you why they're afraid. Check this out. Did you guys see this poll? This is the Economist slash YouGov poll. August 12th through August 15th, 2023. Watch this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so you can see. I forget how big they let me go and then it drops down. Sometimes it does it like this. I could just scoot, boot scoot it over. I'll make it bigger as I go. Trial heat, Biden versus Trump. If an election for president were going to be held now and the Democratic nominee was Joe Biden and the Republican nominee was Donald Trump, would you vote for Joe Biden, Donald Trump, other, not sure, I would not vote. Here's something I want to show you that, uh, and we don't need their names for this one. I kind of just need you to see where other is. Can I highlight on here? Yay. Highlight for the win. I want to show you guys something here. Okay. Now I can zoom in. This is other. So these are the people that would not vote for Donald Trump or Joe Biden. These are the others. Let's go to black people. This is what they're afraid of. Right here under race, black, right? 10%. Do you see this? 10%. This is after Cornell West announced he was running. This number was not 10% before. It's been 3%. It's been 2%. It is 10%. That's just for black voters. That's what they're afraid of. That's what mainstream media is not telling you. The Democratic Party, the DNC, they've already seen these numbers. And that's why you continue to see Morning Joe, Simone Sanders, and all the other MSNBC and CNN pundits continuing to tell people that Cornell West could give you Donald Trump and trying to scare people and throw fear into you because they already seen these numbers and they saw that 10% of African Americans would not vote for Donald Trump or Joe Biden. They would vote for other. That's 10%, boo. We're not talking one. We're not talking two. We're talking 10%. And when it comes to the Democratic Party, that is especially important. If they lose 10% of the black vote, do you know what that means? Let me pull it back up. It's not just black folk. Look. Other. Right here. Black people. Okay. White people. 7%. 7%. Hispanic, 5%. Other. You see, now let's go down to the bottom. Look at this part. I would not vote. Check this out. 9% of white Americans. Let me highlight this, sorry. I need to highlight a different row. Whoops. 9% of white Americans said they would not vote. 13% of black Americans say they will not vote. 21% of Hispanic Americans say they will not vote. How 
how many of them showing you this poll? This is recent. That's why they're trying to smear Dr. West. They try to do this with taxes. Most people I know don't give a damn about no damn taxes. We're not looking at you that kind of way. We're not giving you no side eye. Like, oh, okay, well, someone owes on child support. Okay, whatever. I told you it's hard to attack Dr. West. So they go after the income. They go after finances. But they don't want you to see this. And every poll that I've seen put up on mainstream media, they have not showed you these numbers that 10% of African Americans will not vote for either one. And that scares the life out of them. They ain't seen these numbers before. Fear that they are losing the black vote. Oh no. And the Latino vote. You see this? Look at it. Even when we look at between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, right? Watch this. How you get, hold on. Let me highlight Donald Trump. This is how horrible the Democratic Party has been. How the hell you get to this point where 17% of African Americans will vote for Donald Trump? 17%. Seventeen. He got eleven percent last time. If I remember correctly, he got eleven percent of the vote. Seventeen. Hispanic vote. Twenty. Twenty-seven percent. Twenty-seven percent of the Hispanic vote will vote for Donald Trump. Now, Joe Biden, you the incumbent. You know, it just, this number continued to decline. Look at this, 54% of black people will vote for Joe Biden. That number has, that number at one point, I remember when we looked at the approvals right after he was elected, for black people, his approval was over 80%. How you get all the way down to 54? You just, they don't want you to see this. Boom, bam, boom. Share this with your friends. Share that with your buds. Let them know that is after Dr. West entered the race. So that tells you something. And then there's this. But it's not just happening in Massachusetts. People have to pay attention to this. This was released last year. Watch this. Fewer mass voters signing up as D or R Automatic voter law nudges more to become unenrolled. Check this out. And we're not going to read the whole thing, just this top part, because this is important. A growing share of Massachusetts, vo Massachusetts voters are signing up as independents rather than joining a party, according to new data from the Secretary of State's office. Since 2020, nearly 77% of new voters in the state chose not to enroll in a party up from 63% for the two year period. These are the others. I'm one of those independents, by the way. It goes on to say of those who did pick a party, 18% registered in the Democratic Party and 5% registered as Republicans. Mass Inc. poster Steve. Cazella says the increase in independent voters has more to do with the new automatic voter registration law that went into effect in January 2020 than dissatisfaction with two major political parties. But I disagree here because what it does not account for are the people who change their party affiliation. And I'm one of those people who change to independent. He said, so basically you're registered to vote now in a whole range of different situations. When you interact with Massachusetts state government and speci uh, specifically, you're registered unless you otherwise indicate as an independent, not with either party. Ding, 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 ding. This is a thing. This is the thing. In Massachusetts, voters can still participate in party primaries without enrolling in either party. 
at the polls, independent voters are given a choice to cast either a Republican or Democratic ballot. The next day, primary stated for, and that was the one for September 6th. But do you see what I'm saying? This is another reason why they don't want more states don't want automatic voter registration, because if you have automatic voter registration and this is going the way Massachusetts does it, a lot of times people, we tend to be the model and people copy off of us. I'm just keeping it real. And it's going the way that we're doing it. The more people would automatically be registered as not either party and they don't want that. Again, 10% share with your friends and your fam. That's what they're afraid of. Even the last poll I showed you from Simone Sanders, she said, look, the majority of people who are planned to vote for Joe Biden, these are the ones. But notice she ain't showing you those numbers though. If you have not had a chance to do so, smash that like button that helps me out with the algo. If you're new, don't forget to like, sub, and share, and welcome. But we got to keep it real, guys. Let me go to some of the comments here. JB says, Sabs, that part about owing child support may make him more relatable to black men who are working to pay theirs off. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> this proves Dr. West is a, is not a rich, like some of these politicians. There you go. Dave, they can't attack him on policies. There you go. I told you they'll come after your finances next. Teresa says Cornell West lost tenure because of his position on Israel. Yep. T these kinds of tricks they play are so old. I could care less about Dr. West taxes. He is someone who wants to make a difference for everyday people. That's what folks care about. Hardlands Media in the chat. What's up, Kit? Kit says, have third parties on the debate stage. That's right. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you, Black Thoughts. In real life, Blacks in mass will continue to vote dim. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, we're trying to... Get people to move in a different direction. Thank you, Justin. To get Cornell on the ballot in Massachusetts, we need 50,000 people to register as Green Rainbow Party members. People need to register with the Green Party in Delaware too. Thank you, Justin. And Justin, I'll have you come on soon to explain that to people as well. And thank you, Yesim. I support Bernie and I would be more than glad to do the same for Dr. West this time with all my heart. He needs our support to be on that debate stage. Thank you, Yesim. And what a cute pup. And I'll take Roger's comment. Computer love. All right. Thank you, Roger. Oh my God. First Sabby has a house. Now Wes, what in the world? What is the world coming to? Um, Cornell has two kids, a daughter, Dylan Zayden West, who is 22 and Clifton, who is 46 years old. How do you owe child support when your kids are adults way beyond 18 years old? Don't ask me. Um, uh, Roger. It's a good question, though. 